morning, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Doing good? It's kind of chilly out, but it's a beautiful sunny day, so that's good. How are y'all on, uh, online? I hope y'all are doing well. Um, let us know what you're having for breakfast. I'm always curious. I would have, uh, if I was home, I'd be making chilaquiles, but, you know, we're here. Amen? Amen? Awesome, awesome. If this is your first or second time here joining us either online or in person, or maybe you're back for the first time in a long time, text WELCOME to 301-900-2920. It's an opportunity for you to get to know us better and for us to get to know you better, to be able to serve you well. How you doing? So please text WELCOME to 301-900-2920. I pray that you have come with great expectancy to meet with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today. Scripture tells us that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So when we praise the Lord and declare him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he is here in our midst. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I pray you come with great expectancy to meet with him today. If you are able and willing to stand, we're going to stand and worship the Lord in song. Today we're going to sing in a few languages this morning, if that's all right with you. We're going to sing in Spanish and I'm heretic later. So we're going to praise the Lord in every language. Amen. Amen.
the Lord all the honor and all of the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia and then in Amharic, they'll say, Oh God, our Father, there is no one like you. Baba Alfi Sama Mafitani Zain And we're gonna learn that chorus this morning. If this is your first time with us, that's okay. We're gonna teach it to you.
In scripture, it teaches us how, how to lament, right? You know, when we sing the words, whatever may pass, whatever may come, we're going to bless the Lord, bless his holy name. Whatever may pass, whatever it is that you may be going through is your reality. And scripture invites us to be honest with God. Psalm 42 says, why are you so downcast, my soul? Oh, but my hope is in God, my salvation. That's a practice of lament. Amen. We acknowledge our reality, but still hold on to the truths of who God is. So today we want to, I want to practice that with you this morning. We're going to, I'm going to say a truth of our reality. And you're going to respond with, but your presence is more real. Because the truth is that God never leaves us. God never forsakes us. He is closer to us than a brother. Amen. So whatever may pass, whatever may come, we're going to say, but your presence is more real. Amen. Amen. We're going to practice this call response here. This water that I'm seeing right now is real. You say, but your presence is more real. That's it, church. This wilderness I'm feeling right now is real. But your presence is more real. That's beautiful. We're going to practice that again. This water that I'm seeing right now, it's real. But your presence is more real. Yes, it is. This wilderness I'm feeling right now is real. But your presence is more real. Amen, amen. You guys got it? We got it, amen. This water that I'm seeing right now is real, but your presence is more real. This wilderness I'm feeling right now is real, but your presence is more real. This water that
with ourselves we can we can be uh, we know that life can become overwhelming seasons become overwhelming and the things that we journey through may not make sense to us in the moment but in that moment I want to challenge you this morning to say God your presence is more real right now your truth is more real right now. 
Yes, I'm overwhelmed. Yes, I'm sad. Yes, all those things are very real. But God, I'm holding on to your presence. I'm holding on to your truth. God, your presence is more real. God, your presence is more real. God, your presence is more real. Yes, it is. God, your presence is more real. 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 Your presence is more real. Whatever circumstance, got your presence is more real. In my health, in my finance, got your presence is more real. Got your presence is more real. In my family, God, got your presence. Your, your word says that you never leave us and you never forsake us. That your word says that you've gone before us, so there's no need to worry because you've already set a table ahead of me. You've gone behind us, so there's no need to worry because you are in the active work of healing and restoring and redeeming. You stand beside me, God, so I can fear nothing. I can be courageous in you, Lord. You have your hand of blessing upon me, so I know that your presence is more real. God, we can hold on to these truths. We will hold on to these truths. We will think on whatever is good and worthy of praise. God, we thank you and we love you. We give you all of the honor and all of the glory forever and ever. May your spirit empower us to be a people that knows that your presence is with us in every circumstance, every season, day in, day out. Would we be, 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 be people be empowered by your spirit to bless your holy name forever and ever. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Starting the day with your customized alarm, falling asleep listening to calm, routes to work on Google Maps, group chats on WhatsApp, podcasters, bloggers, influencers, vloggers, the one thing you must do to live longer. Buzzfeed headlines, climate deadlines, searching Google for answers, binge watching TikTok dancers, tear gas placating the masses, organic food packaged in plastic, the great Pacific garbage patch, the 10 year challenge, two essential steps to achieving a life of balance, $30,000 sneakers, robot teachers, Kim Kardashian's maternity dress, three vital habits that guarantee success, Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z, Generation Alpha, 4G, 5G, 6G, AI, VR, 360, drive through pharmacies, pills to help you sleep, pills to keep you awake, pills to stop the side effects of the pills you take, same day delivery, targeted ad epiphanies, flaunt your wealth, pouting for a selfie, four important ways to getting more healthy, the political left, the Political right, polar bears standing on melting ice. Alexa, what's the meaning of life? 
fast fiber, driverless cars, holes in the ozone, colonizing Mars, posting pictures of your best day ever on Insta, Twitter, Snapchat, Meta, five quick cheats to make your life better, deep fake, fake news, January blues, cancel culture, guilty until proved, Netflix, Prime, YouTube TV, HBO, crunchy rolls, sunsets via live stream, Black Friday panic, space junk orbiting the planet, rising prices, hospitals in crisis, six tips to help you become more decisive, seven techniques that guarantee rest, an ever-growing sense of hopelessness, eight proven methods to help you worry less, where do I fit in all of this, nine secrets for reducing stress, I search for my soul in this modern wilderness, ten top tips to have the best year yet, to make happiness increase, to find the life you seek, trying to buy my peace, trying to find myself, trying to be like everyone else, doing everything this world expects of me, I'm liked, I'm followed, I'm viral, I'm trending, life unending in this kingdom of plenty, so why do I feel so empty? Good morning. You're all a little worked up right now, aren't you? Uh, thank you for joining us here at Seneca Creek. Those of you online, thank you for being with us. And um, I, I realize that that short video uh, triggers a lot of us. Uh, this is the world that we currently inhabit. Uh, the reason that we are having conversations like we're doing today and the reason for this series, because when you and I scroll through the news, when we look at what's happening around our world, there are crises, there's turmoil, there's conflict, there's uh, polarization, there's all kinds of global economic uh, uh, devastation that's happening. And it's not just things out there. We have to live with this. This affects our daily lives so that many of us are struggling with conflicts in our relationship, with economic uncertainty and food insecurity, with doubt and anxiety and fear. And all of these things swirl around in our lives in this current reality. And the question comes to me and to many of us like, wait a minute, I thought Jesus promised us abundant life. What does that look like in an environment like this? How do we hold on to the promises of Jesus if we're followers of him and figure out how to navigate the world that we currently live in? And so that's the point of this series, because we realize that whether we like it or not, um, Oftentimes in our life, and certainly in our world right now, it seems like trouble is just coming in from every quadrant. Every day you wake up and there's something new that's challenging us. How are we supposed to live with this? Here's an interesting fact. If you were to Google what are the most popular um, Bible verses, maybe you're a, like a Bible verse person and you put memes on, or maybe you don't, but... But many people have a favorite Bible verse. So they've done some research, and out of the 10 top Bible verses in this country, two of them have to do with the topic that we want to talk about today. One of them might, you might be familiar with, right? Um, it's found in 1 Peter 5, 7, and it says, cast all your anxiety on him, meaning God, because he cares for you. And some of you may be familiar with that. You may recite that over and over. Another very popular verse is in Philippians 4, 6, and 7 that says, be anxious about nothing. See, some of you know this. How's that working? <laughs> like just saying it doesn't always make it work. So, so uh, this idea of anxiety is something that we are, like we're drawn to verses that address this because this is a part of our world, part of our life. It's a struggle for many of us. And so that's the the question that we want to deal with today, why, why, what is this, and, and how do we deal with this? So to, um, to help us with this conversation, 
uh, and to bring insights that I don't actually have, we are going to invite a special guest speaker up here to join me today. And so I want you to welcome to the Seneca Creek, uh, Lenny Smith. Uh, so Lenny, come on up. Lenny is a uh, licensed counselor uh, with a practice here in Montgomery County uh, and uh, specializing in, wait for this, animal therapy. I know, like I didn't know what this was and I've learned a lot and it's just like my mind is blown. So Lenny, thank you very much for joining us here today. Um, Thanks for um, having me. It was a chilly day. I don't know if it still is out there, but yeah. So uh, welcome. And uh, do you want to say anything about animal therapy before we get started in our questions? Because for some sure. people like me, it's like, what is that? Right. Like, so it's not therapy for the animal. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm not okay. like going okay. nay to horses and okay. somehow okay. they kind of feel safe. Okay. Um, so it's, it's interacting with animals as a means of, of helping us. Um, and so an example is we have uh, two locations where we do equine assisted therapy where there's interaction with horses okay. who are very in tune to their environment. They're very sensitive to the, the changes in heart rates and the beings around them up to, you know, 10 yards. Um, if they sense a change that, you know, another animal's in fight or flight, they will be, turn into fight or flight and they'll react. Um, and so when we engage with them and we've got all kinds of stuff going on, they, they pick up on it, they react to it very physically. They're 1,600 pounds uh, sometimes. So you notice, oh, that horse is moving away from me. I must not be, you know, <laughs> feeling okay. Even though I, I think I'm okay, I'm maybe not. And then, you know, you have a chance to talk with your counselor about what's going on. So they're and almost then, like a barometer for what's going on yes. in the individual. Yes. Interesting. Yes. And it's really um, reinforcing when they come back. You know, if they've left your presence because you're scary and, you know, you have all kinds of stress going on, when you find a way to calm down, they come back. So they don't hold a grudge. They don't, you know, stay away from you just because of you wow. have one feeling one time. So some of us would be like um, the opposite of animal magnets. When we step in, they would just like run the other way because there's so much right. uh, junk going on right. inside, right? That's a starting point. Yeah, that's And then when we find that, that sweet spot of being confident and present, um, if we can get there, sometimes it takes time. Uh, yeah. Life is not easy. But if we can find that feeling, it's reinforcing. And so you work with a lot of families and students as well, right? right. Yeah, yes. That's fascinating. So uh, by the way, if you, uh, if you want to uh, touch base with Lenny afterwards, he's going to be over here. He can you know, answer questions or whatever you might have. But uh, today we want to talk about anxiety, obviously. Right. And uh, this is something that... I know you work with on a regular basis. So a couple of questions to kind of get us going through. First of all, um, what is anxiety? Right. So th this is a topic that's actually, you know, obviously very old. Jesus talked about anxiety. It's, it's been a theme since we've been alive, right? Since yeah. people have been alive. Um, modern clinical psychology studies and describes anxiety as excessive worry, um, inability to sleep, restlessness, irritability, kind of this whole combination of, of symptoms that can be, you know, other medical conditions or it can be generalized anxiety. So we kind of have a couple different branches. There's anxiety that's kind of all the time, all over the place or at a, a steady level and across all environments. And then we've got specific anxiety or specific phobias that, you know, similar to right now, you know, sitting in front of a group of people or being on the internet and talking. Creates a little anxiety. Creates some anxiety. That yeah. could be a specific anxiety. Okay. Um, and so I'm, I might notice some of those physiological symptoms start to come up when I have those things. So I might avoid those situations. And so anxiety can kind of be, uh, uh, clinically can be a problem across a lot of different parts of our lives. Yeah. So um, what... Um what are some of the, you, you talked a little bit about it, but what are some of the, the symptoms and then maybe even some of the causes behind anxiety before we sure. get into kind of the, 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 the nuts and bolts of this here? But. Well, what's interesting is you hear a lot of, um, uh, I've heard a lot of stories of people coming into counseling through the emergency room. You know, they, they go to the emergency room saying, I, I can't breathe, my, I have tightness in my chest, uh, my stomach hurts all the time, my, you know, my head hurts, I've got muscle aches. Um, and they go to the doctor and they say, what on earth is wrong with me? Um, and if the doctor's good, they'll ask, what's going on in your life? You know, what, what are some of the stressors, you know, what are you carrying? And they can, you know, hopefully get to a point where they say, you might want to work with somebody to kind of deal with what's, 
what's going on. So a lot of people are diagnosed by way of the physical symptoms. Okay. So um, what's interesting is I, anxiety is, is a part of our involuntary nervous system. So not to go back to biology class, but basically our, we have two parts of our nervous system, kind of what we do intentionally and then what happens when we're not thinking about it. Digestion, um, blinking, breathing, you know, all the r cells repairing, all that happens with our involuntary nervous system. It's got two states of being. It's kind of like an on-off switch. So one is fight or flight. That's the, kind of like our body's alarm system. Something's wrong, run. Something's wrong, fight, right? Or if something's wrong, play dead. It's kind of, that's the behavior that you see. Um, that's not necessarily where we're intended to stay, right? That's, that's periodic, kind of like an alarm system. If you have a fire alarm that's always triggering, you know your fire alarm is, is faulty, <laughs> right? It's, you're you're not going to get any sleep, right? Yeah. Um, or if it's never firing, you have a problem. Uh, okay. But often people don't show up to counseling saying, I have no anxiety. <laughs> they, they just turn out to be like evil Knievel and, you know, they, they ride motorcycles off cliffs and things. Um, they should have anxiety. Yeah. So um, what, I, what I try to talk about with uh, clients and, and people who ask me is um, anxiety is a natural part of being a human. Having some anxiety is a natural part of being a human. Okay. Um, so I talked about the fight or flight stage. The other option for our involuntary nervous system is homeostasis or um, everything's okay. You know, that's basically a fancy word to say everything's okay. Okay. So when you're in homeostasis, you might have a picture in your head of, you know, I felt that way when I was on the beach and just watching the waves or I was on a hike and I was just kind of breathing the fall air. You know, everybody kind of has their own picture of like where that feels safe. Maybe um, I'm at my, you know, grandma's house and she's cooking and Everything feels okay. We're all together. You know, we, we hopefully know what that feeling is like. Um, and it, anxiety becomes a problem when we're too often in, that, in the fight or flight state of being and not in the everything's okay. And like the video that we watched, you know, there's a lot of factors that are trying to get us to be in the fight or flight because we make impulsive decisions. Um, we are easy to be preyed upon with our money. Uh, you know, we're, we're not very decisive or, or um, disc uh, discretionary about what we do. So what's interesting is one part of our brain kicks on when we're anxious, and then a different part of our brain kicks on when we're okay. And the different part of our brain is our frontal lobe, our prefrontal cortex, which is where we make our decisions, where we're oriented to time. So if you ever see someone who's in fire flight mode, they don't know what day is it. Where, you know, where am I? What am I supposed to do next? They're, they're flustered. You, know, you can tell something is wrong yeah. because they've lost contact with that part of their brain. And I don't know if you've ever had the experience, but I've been, you know, I work on something and I'm really frustrated with it and I can't figure it out. And then I take a break, I take a walk, I take a shower, and then it's like, yeah, I could just do that. How did I not know that? That's literally my body going from one state to the other and my creativity comes back. Interesting. So... So the symptoms obviously are, can, can be a lot of these different things. What, what are some of the things that cause that alarm bell to go off? Kind of? Well, like it's, it's natural to our bodies, anything that we, we have a, a sense of some danger that triggers anxiety, so that's normal. Um, you know, I'm crossing a street and a bus is coming, I should run. You know, I, I react. Um, some of the more latent kind of triggers that we get sometimes can be reinforced by messages that we receive as children. You know, be afraid of that because that will harm you. Okay. Um, stay away from that. That will, you know, cause you harm. Or it's something you experience. Um, you know, something bad happened to me and I'm going to stay away from anything related to that for the rest Trauma. of my life. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so, we talk about anxiety. We understand it's kind of everywhere. Are there some, maybe some myths about this, some, some popular beliefs that you would like to kind of straighten out? Like, here's, here's some things to know and understand sure. if we're going to have a good conversation. I think one of the biggest ones that I notice is I hear a lot of people talk about, um, I have anxiety or I am anxious almost as an identity. Um, you know, you probably think about like, oh, my nephew, he's got anxiety. And obviously he's got anxiety. If he's a human being, he's got anxiety. So, but it's shorthand for 
the anxiety is keeping him from doing things that are, are meaningful in his life. Um, okay. And so I, I really like to kind of put a fine tune on what we internalize, you know, what, what labels or identities we internalize and we, we carry with us. So when we say, I have this anxiety, you know, I like it when we have a conversation about what is the anxiety telling you? It, you know, externalize it a little bit. What is it kind of highlighting is a problem? What is it telling you that you need to do? Um, so that's a big one that I hear a lot of people kind of claim it as this part of us, which then becomes a terminal illness. You know, okay. I have this crippling anxiety that now I'm expecting that it's going to last my whole life. Okay. I'm never going to get any relief from it. Um, and, you know, it can be debilitating and it is harmful, um, but there is hope and there is healing and there is, you know, treatment for it. Okay. So it's not a, the myth is that it's just like, I'm just an anxious person. I'll always be that way. Exactly. Okay. Uh, any other myths kind of things that you would want to put to rest here? <laughs> I think that's the big one. Okay. Um, it, it's just the, the claiming and identifying with it because it, then you're a victim of something, right? It, it's it's you have the no cloud agency. that hangs over your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can't get away from it. Okay. Um, and so uh, I like the posture of I'm having a conversation at the table with it. And sometimes it needs to go away. Okay. Right? Because I'm in charge. Got it. Um, oh, so go ahead. Were you going to say something else? God's in charge. Not I'm in charge. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, why? It, it feels like, um, like we're dealing with this on a much bigger scale now. Mm -hmm. um, is that the case? Is it just that we're more attuned to what anxiety is? Um, or I mean, what's your, what's your understanding of that? Well, I think there's a lot more research being done to identify, you know, the, the physiological symptoms may have its roots in anxiety. Um, we have a better understanding now of the impact of the stress hormone cortisol and what it does to your body and how, you know, you, you show up to the doctor with these physical symptoms. It, it's caused by constant stress. Um, so we, we have more research. We're gathering more data um, in my field. Uh, we have a lot of pediatricians that send clients to us because they they are more thoughtful about connecting the dots with symptoms that they see, and that may be related to something that could use some counseling. Um, and so they're doing anxiety screenings, they're doing depression screenings with okay. children. So it's it's showing up more, but also the past two and a half years haven't helped. Um, wow. You know, you think about all the things that help us deal with feeling stressed out, and you know, for a period of time we lost all of those. Um, and everything went online, um, which is helpful. I don't know if anybody had to make a living during that time and had to work. You know, I'm, I'm grateful for the internet and I'm grateful for the ability to continue to provide for my family. But um, there's a threshold, I think, where we've engaged so much that it's, it's caused a different reality and without the coping t uh, tools, without the, the ways of kind of regulating the kind way we need to venting to your coworkers and things like right. that. Right, like I said earlier, yeah. the uh, in our discussion, the the water cooler, you know, there's yeah. no more water cooler. Um, and think about how restorative that can be to just kind of share your life with someone, and then feel heard, and then you hear someone else, and that that helps us. You know, anxiety can become a problem when I have no place to put the stress that I have, and no one understands it. Yeah, yeah. So so what I hear you saying is. Yeah, we're, we're getting better at identifying and diagnosing, but it's not just that. It's like there really is more because of all the things that are going on in our world. Right. right. Because yeah. of the things we saw in the video. Yep. That just keep pushing on that. Right. Our, our, our circadian rhythm, our daily lives are not filled with the things that um, I think that God intended our lives to be filled with in the way that we need them. So we, we need connection. But are we getting that? through social media, maybe, I, I wouldn't quantify it, but maybe 10%. Like I get a 10% enjoyment from a social interaction online. I get 95 to 100% enjoyment from hanging out with my friend yeah. and you know, sharing my life. Yeah, and we won't even go down the road of does social media cause anxiety? <laughs> By definition, that's what it's intended to do, right? <laughs> 
Yeah. That they've literally created these apps to cause us to never feel like we can put it down and walk away. Yeah. What am I missing? You know, uh, I'm as guilty as any. So the alarm else. is just always on. Always on. Yeah. Always on. Um, so let's talk for a minute about, okay, so, so understanding a little bit better what it is, how it shows up. What, uh, what are some strategies that you would recommend uh, for somebody who's, how do I deal with this? How do I start resolving some of this? Mm -hmm. Understanding that anxiety will always be a part of the human life, but how do I deal with this in a, sure. in a, in a healthy way? So I think about it kind of like in three phases. Um, and I, I hesitate to say, you know, three easy steps. I'm, I'm not claiming that. Uh, each step can be variably hard depending on, you know, your life experience. But I think phase one is learn how to rest. Mm. We don't really know how to rest because we, uh, we were at the beach a couple weeks ago and there's people on their phones at the beach. I want to pull my phone out and figure out some things while I'm on the, you know, like I'm at the place where I'm supposed to rest and I'm going back to the thing causing me stress. <laughs> So I, I, you, I think finding ways, and, and separate even just from technology, but just finding ways to feel at peace, finding places to be in, the, in that everything's okay state. And that looks different for everybody. Some people like to be outside and you know, take a walk. Some people like to sit with some friends and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, probably everybody can identify that, that place that feels like home. So just having a place to start, and then practicing. What is it like to rest? And where do I need more? Okay. That's step one. Phase one. Phase one, yes. <laughs> Phase two, I think, is sharing with someone that you trust, someone with some wisdom, what's going on. Um, you know, when we engage with what we're dealing with and we put it on a table with someone else, often we can get some insight. You know, I'm stressed about money. We might meet with somebody and, and say, here's the things that are going on. And they can you know, highlight for us, well, here's some things that sounds like you're telling me are causing you the most stress. Could you work on those things? What could you do? So externalizing it sometimes gives us a little bit more um, objectivity, a little more control over what's going on. Um, and so th that's a huge thing that we need as people is you know, if, we, if we keep it all inside our head, we'd start to develop some patterns of believing some things that may not be accurate. Okay. If I say it to a friend, they might say, well, that's not exactly true. Can you think about it this way? You know, so it's, phase two is just kind of finding places to share. Okay. So phase one is rest. Learn to rest. Learn to rest. Phase two, finding people to share that with. Right. Phase three. So phase three, it's kind of like the counseling process. There's the, um, the exploration, the insight, and then the action. You know, people show up to counseling and they want to get to, all right, here's the problem. What do I do? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just met you, you know, I'm not a sage, I don't have any special, you know, magic, but um, we need to get some insight. And so once you've developed with your, with sharing with somebody, here's where I really need to focus to get better. That's when the action steps can come, and I, I call it coping skills. So coping is um, uh, trying to introduce the perfect tool for an imperfect situation. If anybody knows carpentry or framing, a coping saw is a great tool because it kind of hides mistakes where things don't really line up exactly. So coping is kind of like knowing that this problem's gonna come up, but I have some ways to deal with it. And you know, everybody might have theirs. I know probably for you, it's getting on a bike. You probably sort a lot of things out when you're on the bike, <laughs> right? Yes, I've solved all the problems of the world. <laughs> Thank you very much. But you got to go 100 miles to get there, right? Uh, apparently, yes. Yeah. Five that, won't that do worked. it. No. Uh, some people, it's less extreme. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, I notice within myself, I have some, some markers that things are getting out of whack, and I need to do something about it. I need to take a day off. I need to call someone to talk through what's going on with me. Um, I need to set better boundaries. You know, I... Some things are out of control that I could probably say, you know, I'm not okay with this right now. And so that's the nuance of it, you know, which coping skill will help in which thing. You know, do you need to learn to do breathing exercises? That can be helpful. I was doing them during worship, you know, singing and praising God. It invites that deep belly breathing. You can get into yeah. that if you want, uh, yeah. Google deep belly breathing. You get into that, that's restorative breathing that gets us back to everything's okay. Um, 
just another small tip that can be helpful is um, there's a lot of research now about mindfulness. And some people are a little bit scared, like, ooh, what does that mean? Is that, you know, counter-Christian? Um, but I think if you look through the scriptures, Jesus has been talking about it the entire time. Yeah. Um, he talks about the, the Lord's Prayer. It's about today. Um, it's about what's going on right now. So mindfulness is really just a, a practical um, noticing of what's around us. So if what's around us is safe and we go and we notice uh, a trick is to do, uh, go through your five senses, do an inventory of your five senses. So notice, what do I see around me? How many things around me have the color blue? Um, what do I feel? What's this table feel like? What's the temperature feel like? You know, we can get into the, the nitty gritty, but it's um, the five senses technique is really helpful for what we call grounding, okay. getting us into the moment. Um, and that's something anybody can practice at any time. Nobody needs to know you're doing it. Um, there's a lot of articles and, and YouTube videos yeah. on grounding techniques, mindfulness. Um, yeah, so, so that's the, the, third, the third phase is finding those coping mechanisms that, as you said, an imperfect, for an imperfect world, right. imperfect life. Right. Okay. Um, so let me ask you this then before, before we run out of time. Um, the, the question that comes to my mind often, and maybe for uh, some of the folks who are listening here, is, okay, so what, if I'm a person of faith, like, how does that intersect? Does that intersect? Is there a place where my faith, because we've talked about some psychological principles, mm -hmm. but, like, if I'm a, a Jesus follower, like, how does that intersect with, how does that help me or not in, in trying to deal with anxiety? Right. So um, Jesus addresses anxiety really kind of in depth in this really cool picture in Matthew chapter 6. And so that would be a good place to kind of study. I studied it with some friends years ago, and something that stood out to me was uh, the shorthand is don't be anxious. But I knew that there was more there because of what you said earlier, like how's that working? You know, yeah. don't be anxious. Um, there's a, a relationship that he's painting, a picture that he's painting of the relationship. And what he's saying is, there is definitely thing, things to be anxious about. You are insecure. You know, the, the people he was talking to, he's talking about food and clothing. You don't have clothing yeah. that you need, and you don't have food. And you're worried about it. And he's saying, don't worry about that. Why? <laughs> yeah. So he, he paints this, the picture of the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. And then he, he centers on us, and he says... Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen. Not necessarily a promise of, you'll be incredibly wealthy, and you'll never worry about anything ever again. Yeah. It's seek me, my a relationship with me. And I think that's where, where I would land as a believer. You know, my, the clinical work doesn't necessarily lead us there all the time. But I'd say in this context, that's the answer, is a relationship with Jesus. And it's a process. So something I want to highlight is um, when I read that last sentence, seek first the kingdom of God, it doesn't say obtain the kingdom of God, yeah. and it's fixed. Yeah. It's seek. Seeking is a process. It takes time. And what I, what I want to encourage everybody with is if you're, a, if you're a believer and you're feeling frustrated that you still have anxiety, it's not that your faith is bad or your faith is wrong or you've done it wrong. It's that... Um, God desires for this to be a rolling process where he's, he's sanctifying us. He's making us more like Jesus. So be encouraged. It's, it's a constant relationship. It's an interaction. Yeah. And then um, the last part I'd say is the times in my life where I've been through trouble and it's been difficult and I realize at the end of it that God was with me, guiding me, I often find it's such a sign of God's mercy that he allows me to go back and help people who are going through something similar. And, yeah. you know, that's my story as a counselor is I feel God's mercy when someone's sitting across from me that was me yeah. years ago. Yeah. And I'm able to know what's going on in their life and help them through it. And I feel like thankful that I got through it. You know, I wasn't thankful that it happened in the moment, but I'm thankful now for the sake of that person. Yeah. And I see that that's, kind of, that's how God works. He, he uses the Bible to help us know his heart and his promises. He uses his people 
to, to be his hands and feet in our lives. Yeah. And he used his Holy Spirit to restore things that we can't restore ourselves. Amen. Yeah, amen. And we, we talked uh, earlier uh, to, and it's interesting, in the Matthew 6 passage where Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God, and it's that idea of what is it that I'm pursuing, right? And right. we talked about the, the Greek word that's translated anxiety actually is, comes from this idea of being distracted, mm -hmm. right? And so that anxiety often shows up because we get distracted, mm -hmm. not by things that don't matter, but you know, from Jesus' perspective, focus on this first, yep. right? And, and then these things begin to wor work their way out. So um, I want to thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I know we could talk for a long time about this, um, but we do have, you know, kids that want to get out of powerhouse and parents and, and another service and all that kind of stuff. So we'll wrap this up. I just want to say thank you for joining us. And uh, if you have questions for Lenny, he's going to be over here in this area after the, the gathering is done. So feel free to kind of check with him if you want. And um, yeah, so um, thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Um, let me just wrap up uh, this conversation with a prayer, if I could. God, we thank you that in an anxious world, we can have hope. That when all of the voices and influences around us are setting off the alarm bells, that we can find the shalom of God. Not, not to run from all of those, God but to be centered on the person of Jesus and the call of God in our life and the promises that you make to us, God. Would you help us learn how to seek you in those anxious moments? Uh, God, would you remind us of your promises? Would you encourage us through the power of your spirit, through the truth of your word, and through the community, the fellowship of the body of Christ walking together uh, and encouraging one another. Uh, God, we pray that we would become those kind of people individually and together as the body of Christ that learn how to deal with anxiety and to live in and to radiate the peace and the shalom of God through our lives and through our church. And we pray this all, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So before you go, before you check out online, uh, a couple things we want to let you know about, some opportunities, some new things coming up here at Seneca Creek. And uh, Nikki, hi. How's it going, everybody? Good. good. Wasn't that wonderful? That's awesome. Brother Letty was preaching back there. I was like, oh, I got to hold this together because I'm going to get too loud. <laughs> he, he was preaching this morning. Amen? Yeah, great stuff. Thank you, Brother Letty, for sharing. I've got a few opportunities to share. Yes. First of which... Our Quest Ministry is having bonfires, hay rides, and all kinds of things fun at Butler's Orchard, October 23rd at 6.45 p.m. This is a free event, but there are limited seats, so be sure to check it out, scan the code, bring yourself and a friend, maybe two. If you're um, in high school. Huh? If you're in high school. If, apparently, yes. <laughs> apparently, if you're in high school, um, yes. I apparently cannot make it, all right? That's okay. All the high school students will be there. there you so go. if you're in high school, join them. All right. Second opportunity that I have for you is coats, coats and coats. Winter coats are what we've been collecting for our neighbors. Coats for children, coats for, coats for adults. Uh, you can bring them by on Sunday mornings from 9 to 1 or Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. Please bring gently used clean coats. Or if you're in a position to do so, you can bring a brand new coat as well. Only coats, though, please. Only coats, because that's all we're collecting for this. Yes. That's not, it. Not hats and mittens and underwear not, and socks yes. and shoes. None of those coats. things. Coats. You can take those to, to Goodwill or Somewhere. some other place. Yes. But we're collecting coats. Honestly, it's because we don't have enough space for all of the other things. Exactly but bring right. your coats. Amen? coats. Amen? What we bring in? Coats. All right. Hey. All right. Hey. Say, look. All right. Our last and final opportunity that I want to invite you to is the Christmas Toy Shop. So this will be our second year that we do the Christmas Toy Shop here at Seneca Creek with the Gaithersburg Cares Hub. 
there was a study published that there's about 30% of families within the Montgomery County area that are food insecure. And in our own CARES Hub, we've already, um, we've already recorded about 615 households. That's 615 households that we serve, that we've served in the past, since every two weeks we've been collecting this data, right? So that's a lot of families. And so when you're food insecure, like you can't really think about um, how to make the holidays special for your children. So we want to invite you to be able to help our families and our neighbors um, have a special holiday. We empower them to come and bring their buy the gifts for their kids at our Christmas toy shop. All right. Our aim this year is to serve 70, 750 children. 750 children. I think we can meet that and then some. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Everything you need to know about the toy shop is found on our app and our website, or you can scan the code or text TOYS to 301-900-2920. Now, how, you might be sitting there asking yourself, how can you be a part of the Christmas toy shop this year? Easy answer, I got you. You can help by do donating new unwrapped toys, and you can bring that here to Seneca Creek Monday through Fridays and not from nine to five or on Sunday mornings from nine to one. Um, and then we, we got an awesome list of ideas of toys that you can get on yep. our website. So Super if you ever, if you don't got kids and you know don't know how to shop for kids, that's me, I don't know. I can find it on our website, amen. All right, we also have toys on an Amazon wish list to make it easier for you two as well. Um, uh, and all of that, all those links are found on our website and app. And again, scan the QR code or text toys to 301-900-2920. I believe that's, that's all awesome. the opportunity. I was like, look, this was a special one. I had to bring out the notes for that that's last a lot of, one. That's a lot of okay. great opportunities. Yeah, yes. so thank you, uh, and also a word of thanks to all of you who, through your generosity week after week, allow us to continue to do ministry throughout the week to serve our community through the CARES Hub, through our student ministry, recovery ministries, and so much more. So thank you. If this is your church home and you haven't started a generosity journey, today's a great day to start. It's super easy. You can use the app, the website, or just text two words, Seneca, give to 77977. You get a link back, and it uh, gets you started right away. So with that, uh, let me ask you to stand with me, if you would, if you're in the room here. Uh, we're going to pray, and then we'll be dismissed for today. Heavenly Father, thank you again so much for your Son, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who came into our world so that we could experience the shalom of God, so that we would not be held victim by anxiety, God, but that we would be able to walk through this uh, knowing that we are seeking first your kingdom and your righteousness. God, would you help us to live that out this day in our separate worlds, in our lives, in our communities, in our workplaces, in our classrooms. Go with us now, God, we pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming out. Have a great week. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining our Sunday gathering. Whether you watched live or at another time, our hope and prayer is that you were inspired and encouraged by the music and message. There are loads of other ways to get connected at Seneca Creek Community Church, and we want to invite you to jump in and check them out. First, if you're new or new-ish, text WELCOME to 301-900-2920 so we can connect. We won't spam you, we promise. It's just an invitation for you to get to know us better, to peek behind the scenes and ask us questions freely. Secondly, if you're interested in more community opportunities, check out the link in the description below for events, signups, and for opportunities to serve and love our neighbors and so much more. And if you're really interested in keeping up to date on all the activities here at Seneca Creek, download our app for quick and easy access. Lastly, we want you to make sure you press that thumbs up, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check out our other social media platforms. Those links are also in the description below. We hope to see you soon, whether online or in person. Bye.